new battery has arrived. And we've unloaded it from this truck. With this. Yeah, last time they delivered with a smaller truck. It could pull a right in front of my house. This time they came with a huge truck and I'm here at my favorite mechanic and they thankfully allowed me to put it here and take it apart here. Okay, so you see I've now opened the battery pack and that is sitting at um, roughly 400 volts and so it is dangerous to work with. Now observe what I'm doing. I'm sitting um, at the side which is, has the lowest voltage because the high voltage is where all cells in series meet and that's on the far side where the orange switch gear is located. So you don't want to start bolting or unbolting stuff over there because that's where the high voltage is really close. It's also important to know in a high voltage battery pack you can touch any one terminal and nothing's going to happen because it's not mains or it's not earth reference. So touching one um, one terminal is even with your bare hand is not going to do any damage to you. And well, I'm not. Of course, I'm taking precautions. I'm wearing those gloves. Um, so I, I won't be touching any bare metal part. Mm. Yes, and I've uh, I've removed the the bus bar that connects the right and left half first because then I've already diminished the voltage from 450, let's say, to 250 volts. And you can see me work my way forward to further diminish the voltage. And yes, um, I think a greater danger is is short circuits. So for example, on a less well-designed battery pack, it is possible to drop a tool in there. Mm, and that can short out battery terminals and they can deliver like infinite current. Of course, not infinite, but 10 kilo amps. What it will do is it will vaporize your tool and that will generate very hot plasma and if you get in touch with that you're gonna burn body parts. So that's why you should take great care not to do that. So one way is to use isolated tools um, and another way is also to wear protective clothing which is fireproof and in case of this VW battery pack they have diminished the, the likelihood of that happening by design because there's basically no exposed metal parts that are under voltage. The bus bars are isolated as you can see and also the bolts holding the bus bars in are enclosed in plastic. So even if you were to drop anything in there it's super unlikely if not impossible to short out anything at all. And also another danger if you did manage to short out even just one battery module is that you will overload the lithium cells and they will uh, suffer terminal runaway and that means they will catch on fire and that's super hard to extinguish and well fire is always dangerous so should be avoided by all means yes so i've now worked my way to the last bus bar so now the highest voltage in there is 44 of i think 46 volts i will measure that in a second and that is no longer dangerous at all and you can safely touch 46 volts you're not even going to feel it i have my lab power supply here and to be able to reach 50 volts i've put them both in series so this one is outputting 44 volts, this one's outputting 10 volts, so on here we have um, 54 volts. Let's touch it. 
So if touching it with two fingers, I can barely feel it. It's it's uh, yeah, not much. What's unpleasant if I do this? Oh, shit. Yeah, because then <laughs> it's just traveling um, this very short distance. So the current that flows from here to there is much higher than the current that flows all the way from the left arm to the right arm. And um, is therefore less painful. So here we go, it's all taken out. So these are the eight modules that will actually go into the car. Um, they are 509 by roughly 900 millimeters wide and the whole assembly, I haven't even measured that yet, is like 220 millimeters in height. And yet there's no cooling in between and no distance in between, there will be some some distance because we have 250 millimeters to work with so um, we can make use of these and then uh, this module right here that would be left over most probably at least um, because yeah, I think eight modules is just enough that's 55 kilowatt hours and supposedly 52 kilowatt hours usable and you can see um, four modules share one cell management unit or whatever it's called no module management um, so there's two in total and then this one has a little extra one um, right here now just uh, thinking out loud here uh, about the details so i've put a little piece of wood between these two to kind of simulate the spacing let's say it should ultimately have so obviously there's going to be a box around all this and then uh, I think we can even use VW's original fasteners to um, to bolt them into the kind of retention blocks that connect the battery to the to the wall here. So can you reuse these nice bolts? Um, then around the corners this will be um, this will be bolted together and maybe I can reuse some more VW bolts. They are, I think, self-tappers. Right, then we come to the topic of bus bars and of course um, VW have more spacing between the modules because I think it's for crash safety. They have like enormous, uh, what do you call it, retention bars between each uh, module. Um, so in the driving direction these modules can never move no matter how hard the crash. I don't know what the original vehicle looked like. It seems to have been in a crash because the pyrofuse is blown. Um, anyway, we, have, um, we don't have that spacing because we don't have the space for the spacing. I think in the back of the car we only have 94 centimeters uh, total and already as the modules sit here they are 89.5 centimeters. Yeah, so there would be some spacing in it, but not enough. And this is denoted by this original bus bar. This is one of the shorter ones. And you can see it's just much too long. So, 
I have some copper material here. It's uh, still left over from the Nissan pack, so yeah, I might be able to cut it to length and isolate it against uh, especially this metal here. Um, yeah, I just make new bus bars, unfortunately. That's how it is. Okay, then we see the BMS here. It's, it's two, two of them, handling four modules each. <coughs> and yeah, it's almost connected up. This one's missing. So, uh, right, I think it will sit outside the box. So the box is going to be here, and there's going to be holes in it wherever these uh, cables protrude and then there's going to be an extra box um, for for just the the module management unit that's going to sit outside and reason being the the volume in tour is shaped like this it goes up like this and then it comes in and then it goes up like this so i have a lot of spare space in the lower portion here that i can make use of Right, <clears throat> so the upper two modules are going to be, uh, four modules are going to be in series, here, 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 and then I will try to come up with a bus bar arrangement that kind of goes around here. I'm going to have some extra space in the front here. It goes around here, down here, and, and here, and I might have to split it because once the modules in the box, there's no way I can, I can put a bolt in here. Yeah, so I will have to kind of connect them on the side here where, where they are still accessible. And then likewise on this side, then there's going to be another interconnect here and here, but of course not here, because then that would be short-circuited. So our high voltage is going to exit on these two terminals here um, and protrude the box and the switch gear is in the exhaust tunnel. It's going to be like around here. So it's a really short distance that we need to travel. That could come in handy. Um, I will be able to to use these nice bolts for the for uh, holding on the bus bars because uh, they have the nice feature of being isolated on the top. That will be handy as well. Good. If you have any suggestions, please uh, write them in the comments down below, because mechanics is definitely not my strong point. Maybe you see a way that I could modify these bus bars, I could shorten them, drill new holes in them or something. Uh, maybe here. Mm. Yeah, just let me know in the comments. Alright, then comes the delicate question of cooling. Um, now in the original pack, the modules were sitting on a cooling plate, chilling plate, and behind here there's some pretty nicely worked out cooling channels which have, which have like flow rate reductions to have even flow through all these nine chambers. And yeah, we don't have space to fit that stuff, unfortunately. It's nicely worked out. So I think I will just be using air cooling. So I will. Um, in some way, um, between the spacing of the cells, I will be blowing air through them and have it exit on the top and just, uh, yeah, derate the charging when the temperature rises too high. And I should say air cooling works nicely in the, with the Nissan pack right now. Uh, there's two bricks, like one here, one here, and the front one is like yeah, inherently air cooled by the airstream through the exhaust tunnel, and the rear module is actively air cooled with a 120 millimeter fan. And since I've done that, the battery temperature never rises to alarming levels. So I think air cooling can be sufficient. All right, and here is our contactor box. Um, what we see here, I think this is a positive contactor box it doesn't matter let's just call it the positive one and i think these would be two shunts but they have no electronics in them whatsoever so i think it's just a, it's just a shunt and then the pins are connected straight to it and the actual measurement is going to be done in the cell uh, 
battery management unit. Then next to it, we've got a pyro fuse, which is blown. There's no, no continuity from here to there. And then we've got two contactors, and I will explain why that is in a second. And then we've got the negative contactor block. Um, battery voltage comes in here, and it can switch through to here and here. And these two are bridged. I think this is some sort of auxiliary. Yeah, whatever. Then here we've got a fuse with a rather surprising rating. It's just 100 amps, 450 volts. Um, and 100 amps, that doesn't really match up with the 120 kilowatt uh, charge power this thing can take. So this is definitely not the main pack fuse, I think. Well, it would be a really surprising rating. <clears throat> Yeah, and then in addition, um, that's just for the system engineering part, we've got this uh, bus bar assembly here. And then here we've got all the various power outputs that uh, leave the pack. So we've got two chunky power outputs um, because I think this is the dual motor model. So we've got two separate outlets uh, for, for each motor. And they can also be switched separately um, with these contactors. I will show you that in a second how the logic works. Right. Um, then here we've got some contacts uh, that let the battery management unit sense whether anything is blown. So in this case uh, it will, would be able to detect that the pyro fuse is blown because there's no continuity on the outer two pins. Like these two bus bars connect straight to the outer two pins, pin one and four of this connector and I reckon the two inner ones will somehow connect to the relays to uh, be able to detect if the relays are still switching or if, if they are welded. Yeah, likewise here we can sense if the fuse is blown and uh, also we can sense uh, the relays. Good, let's make some continuity measurements to see what's what. Right, so let's uh, start. Yeah, we already um, hooked up to this. And but let's go over to this one. And we will find, well, there's no continuity ever from, from here to anywhere because the pyro fuse is blown. So we have to measure from here. So this relay switches on this contact, but not this one. So now if we switch on the other relay, We have no continuity at all, but we have continuity between the two, which we didn't have before. So if I turn it off, continuity is gone. So apparently the power first goes via this relay directly to, which one was it, this output. And then you can, in addition, uh, route it over to this output by switching on this relay. And it's likewise um, here. This relay will connect to here and here, but not here. And then this relay will connect these two. Right, so yeah, apparently it's possible to switch the two uh, inverters separately. Um, also the rating of these uh, contactors again is a bit um, surprising, not quite as surprising as the fuse one. Uh, 180 amps. 180 amps continu continuous. So apparently automakers don't um, dimension their components for the for continuous peak power. Um, I'm not uh, exactly sure of the peak power of the dual motor ID3. Let's say it's like in the 200 kilowatt ballpark. Well, yeah, if you pull 200 kilowatts from it uh, for 15 minutes, it's going to be empty because we, are... yeah, we've just got like 60 kilowatt hours to play with with this medium-sized battery. So, hence why there's no continuous peak power rating on any of these components. Good, so I think that's all there is to say about this contactor assembly. It's mildly do-it-yourself friendly because the shunts are not smart. You have to do the 
<coughs> the galvanic isolation and all the, the signal conditioning yourself, so that's not very interesting. The fuse is super small, I'm not really sure what's, what's up with that. And, well, the relays, just for the relays, the assembly is a bit big, actually. And then the pyro fuse will mostly be blown on, uh, on used packs, because, well, they come from cars which had an accident. Good, and then here is the fastening concept, which uh, was done actually from sort of a customer of mine. The, um, yeah, they are good with mechanics, I'm not, so uh, I asked, the, asked uh, them, could they help me out? Yeah, so we've got these little um, fastening blocks that uh, attach the batteries to the side walls here. And yeah, the thing is, uh, what's it called? Co conus? Con conical? Shaped or something? So it's, it's uh, wider in the front than it is in the back, because that's how the volume in the car is shaped as well. The batteries will sit on top of each other. And there's going to be some strengthening bar in, on top here. And yeah, I'm thinking the module management units will probably sit outside of the box because we've got some extra volume there that doesn't extend all the way to the top of the box. So basically in the volume that currently houses 40 kilowatt hour, which isn't really usable anymore, uh, we can now house 55 kilowatt hours. And um, yeah, I think that's quite an upgrade. Uh, at the same time, Turan will get a, an update to CCS charging. So A, that's in most cases uh, higher charge power. I think uh, the <coughs> smaller ID3 battery pack can be charged with 100 kilowatts to 30% or something, and then it kind of tapers off. And yeah, CCS will actually support doing that. And you also have a choice of more chargers nowadays. So the long distance uh, ability of the car should greatly improve with all these upgrades. Good. I think that's all I have to say about the battery upgrade for now. Uh, of course, there will be more video coverage when the box is actually made and the whole thing actually s slides into the car very smoothly, as we all know that always happens. And yeah, I will follow up with a new video then. So, thanks for watching this one and see you next time. Bye.